We are talking about the tactical skills of hand-to-hand -hand combat written by Bradley J. Steiner in 1977. And tactic number eight is to do the unexpected. Employ feints and deceptions and distract the enemy. Do the unexpected. Let's talk about that. The unexpected is that which the enemy's mind is not occupied with. I can remember being in high school and they, in driver's ed, they had this little simulator and you sat in it and you had your foot on the gas pedal and little Johnny ran out in the road and you had to hit the brake when little Johnny ran out. And it measured the time it took from you to get your pedal, your foot off the pedal and onto the brake. And a lot of people's times were in the upper three quarters of a second. So athletic people and just some people in general, you know, could get down to uh, three tenths of a second, something like that. And what is your mind expecting? Little Johnny's going to run out on the road. You're going to react as fast as you can. Nobody's talking to you. Shut up. I'm, I'm, I'm wait, waiting to move my foot faster than my friend just did it. Well, if suddenly the guy was waiting for the thing, playing the game, and he started to think about, oh, I've got to cut the grass today, and what did Dad say about the lawn? And little Johnny ran out. You can see what would happen. Now his mind has to adapt to the new situation and it's going to take him a lot longer to react and, in my case, get the foot from the pedal to the brake. Well, that's just the way the mind works. That, uh, again, the unexpected is that which the enemy's mind is not occupied with. So let's see how that would look uh, with my wife, Jerry. Jerry's going to come out and join us. Hi, Jerry. Okay. So I'm going to approach her and put a knife at her throat. And what am I expecting at this time? That's exactly it. The attacker doesn't really know what to expect. So he's hypervigilant. Is this lady going to give in? Is she going to scream? Is she going to fight? What's she going to do? So at the moment, I don't know. But she's going to give up. She's going to employ feints and deceptions and tell me she'll do whatever I ask her to do. And of course, my mind will now start to be occupied with something else like, Okay, I know she's under control, so what would the expected be at that point for her to attack? So, we rehearse this a little bit, but go ahead and attack me this time. Okay? okay. All right. So, she knows what she's doing. So, notice when I approach, I'm, I'm not sure what to expect, so I'm hypervigilant. You going to do what I tell you? Yes, yes. Gosh, please put the knife down. Don't hurt me. Just put your hands down. Okay. Put them down. Okay. Now. You do what I tell you. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Jerry. Now, that was beautiful, by the way. Um, I really get into playing the part. And I'm thinking, as she's putting her hands down, I'm thinking, I'm going to get her on the floor here and I'll get her, get her tied up. Now my mind's occupied with that. And when she attacked, it was too late for me to do anything. It's kind of funny because I know what she's going to do, but I really don't know when she's going to pick her moment to do it. And she really did take me by surprise there. And it was good, man. I could see those chin jabs landing and the knee attacks. And uh, when you do the unexpected, you take the attacker off balance mentally and physically. And you make it so he cannot recover in time. By the time his mind adapts to this new situation, it's over with. It's already over with. Uh, you know, another thought about this concept, this idea of do the unexpected, employ feints and deceptions and distract the enemy, uh, which is today's lesson, is you really want a persona of being passive, which is me anyways, and it's all the friends I know that certainly have a, an ability to fight. They're not tough guys. They're not acting like tough guys not wearing certain shirts that say certain things. And, and uh, I always love a, a statement Brad Steiner said. He said, every rational person is a pacifist until he's attacked. And I like that because I'm a pacifist. I don't start trouble with anybody. I would never use or initiate force against anybody. But if somebody attacks me, that's a whole different story because I know I'm going to do everything I can to avoid the circumstance, saying whatever I have to say. So when we employ feints and deceptions, 
I might have somebody approach me, and I've had this happen before, and the guy's hot. He's going to, you know, kick my ass kind of thing. And I drop in to relax ready, and I'm like, please, I, I, I don't want any trouble. I, I, I'm really sorry. Now, am I really sorry? I'm not sorry about anything. But I tell him I'm sorry. Look, I was, I've just been distracted today. I, I got bad news about my heart. Now, he might just walk away because, and in every case I've done something like that, the guy has walked away. Kind of like, yeah, you ain't worth it, little pussy. You know, and off he heads his way, fine. But let's say he attacks me. Look, I, I don't want any trouble. I, I just got bad news about my heart. Do you think he expects I'm suddenly going to attack him when he attacks me? No, his mind is occupied with either, oh, he's not worth it, and he walks off, which I'm hoping for, or, huh, he's an easy mark. I'm going to break his jaw. And he's not expecting any trouble whatsoever. And then when you explode into him, using one of the previous tactics with, ah! and you key eye to this guy's face, you tell me that's not doing the unexpected. And you explode into him at that point. We can certainly use physical distractions too. Throwing dirt in somebody's eyes is a great way to distract the enemy. And then a rapid front kick into his testicles or throw the dirt in the eyes and get to your weapon, assuming, of course, you're carrying legally. And where I live, you can legally carry. But you certainly can have physical distractions. You know, I actually did use this one time, but if you speak a foreign language, sometimes speaking inquisitively to that person in a foreign language, and I don't speak any foreign languages, shame on me, but I've used gibberish before. And it really confuses the person because they don't know it's gibberish. What do I got a linguistics expert here that he's going to be able to tell? That's not even a real language you're speaking. But I've had guys threaten me before and I went, And what do you think goes on in their mind? They're like, what the? What, what, what is, you know? And it goes on a little bit and they're going to kind of, boy, that's doing, you know, it's occupied his mind. And now I can see what he wants to do. I haven't done anything aggressively to him. And I just said some gibberish to him, but I acted like it was maybe some other language. He's not going to know the difference. But that could be a good way of occupying his mind with something else. The last thing you want is re his reaction time as fast as it can be. That he's looking for any movement on you and then he's going to move. You want his reaction time to slow, that OODA loop. That time it takes him to perceive the thing, and then make a decision about it, and then implement the decision. Then his speed will come into play. Sometimes speed and in instant action are looked at as the same thing, and they're very different. Speed is how quickly somebody can move. Instant action involves speed, but speed doesn't come till the end. Instant action is a mental thing. You perceive something, you make a quick decision about it, you implement the decision, and then your speed and power come into action. So a person can be very fast and extremely slow to react because they just can't make a decision about what to do. And another person could be extremely slow, but they will implement immediately. And in the bottom line, they end up being faster, if you will, than the person who is fast. So... Remember, today's lesson, do the unexpected, employ feints and deceptions, and distract the enemy. Get creative on how you do this. We'll see you next time for tactic number nine.